with Carlton's pick 11, it was no surprise. He was muchly touted. We talked about him to an nth degree. We got the wonderful Murray Bush Rangers and Vic Country. Wingman who can play inside. He is an inside out. He classes himself out as that. He has really made an impact as well on the inside, particularly for Country. And Ollie Hollands joins us, the 184 centimeter, 71 kegger. Little superstar that he is. He's a phenomenal footballer, an endurance beast, running the fastest time this year at the time trial. A time trial that was incidentally better than Sam Walsh's. Something to watch out for. He would have won the recently released of all the AFL as well, particularly Collingwood's one. A lot of people have been talking about his kicking, but 74.2% disposal efficiency puts him right in about in between fourth and fifth at Carlton Football Club, just behind. Samuel Walsh, and he averaged 23.3 at the under-18s this year with a staggering 6.5 marks and showcasing four tackles, which is really interesting. He runs both ways. He's incredibly versatile and he's incredibly agile as well, and his decision-making is probably one of his strengths. The way that he works in transition and looks to set up the attack. His tireless running as well is something that is really deadly towards the end of quarters as well. It is really noticeable that Ollie is someone that can outrun his entire team and really put the pressure on. He loves to work in that transitional phase as well. Loves to get back hard for his halfbacks, to play them one-twos and to really look at it. And he's also got a little bit about him as he's going inside 50. He's very good at just taking a little bit of pace off in his speed and looking to hit targets. Now, when people talk about the kicking under pressure, you've got to remember that that mainly stems from when he has played on the ball. When he's out in the open, this guy is probably up there in the top five decision makers in this draft comp. And I think he's an incredible player. He comes from great pedigree. His great grandfather, obviously the great Martin Cross. Ben, his dad, played for Richmond. And Elijah is currently probably got the chips in that Holland's family because he was taken a little bit earlier in the draft. But there is something about him. And if you actually saw the championship final game, this guy stood out. He was head and shoulders against some real top players. And he said it himself in the interviews that he stacked up against the best. So one to really look out for. And one who will be ready for the very early, early doors of football. I expect this guy to have a huge preseason. And someone that probably gets a lot of hype moving in. A fantastic acquisition by Nick Austin. It ticked all the boxes that Voss wanted. And a very exciting prospect for us Carlton fans. After a trade with Collingwood, no less, we ended up with one of my favourites and a guy that I have talked to the nth degree about, and that is Lachlan Cohen. An absolute beast. He was the second top fantasy scorer, if you do fantasy scoring for output, in the champs behind Will Ashcroft. This guy is an absolute deadly player, making all Australian as well as being the captain again of the Tasmanians and also winning that Moorish medal, which is huge. He tied that one there with Taj Campbell Farrell as the league's best player. And this guy here is exciting. 187, 81 kegs, incredibly, incredibly athletic huge, huge kick on him. He loves the intercept marks as well. Strong on the deck, strong airily, a massive transitional threat. He can work all day as well. And he's a tough little brute as well. He doesn't mind taking the game on and really locking players down as well. He defends just as hard as he plays. And in my opinion, I had him 15th in this draft class, and there was a reason. Tasmanians get forgotten about. I've got a soft spot for the Apple Isle, I've got to say, but this kid here can play footy. This is what Carlton have been wanting to. He looks ready-made for this individual game. He looks like it, and it is his birthday tomorrow as well. He shares a birthday with David, my son, Pommy and Oz Jr., so it's very exciting for him. A Carlton bagger through and through. And this kid can literally is the modern day football. One of them players that has loads of attacking Arsenal off the back. He's got that sexy little mullet as well. And this guy can turn defense into attack very quickly. Six rebound 50s averaged out at under 18 level, 22 touches, and three marks and four tackles. Like I say, defensively strong. 
Like his ability to spearhead the attack from down back is actually damaging. It's scary. And being 187, he's that wonderful size where he can play that third. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, start in the pockets. This guy did play in the pockets there. And Cowan have traditionally played larger than life pockets. He is a deadly little footballer who has got very good decision making. And in my opinion, out of all of Cowan's four picks, the one I'm most excited about is this kid here, Lachlan. This kid can play footy. This kid is one of them players that we talk about in the modern day game as someone that can change games. Incredibly versatile with his ability to play multiple roles down the back. Is the scope for him going forward of the ball? I don't know. But in my opinion, the fact that he can play high half back, he can play in that because of his defensive just a bit deeper as well. His intercepts and his one-on-one -on -one work is incredible. He's quick, he's smart, He's a pretty good-looking kid as well. If I do say myself, myself, this kid can play footy. Look out for Lachlan as one of the Smokies in this year's draft as well. <music> 32 then, Jackson Bins, the Dandenong Stingrays running machine. 182 and 89 kegs. Uh, I'm 69 kegs, and this guy here is an accumulator on the wing, and Carlton really have always struggled with getting someone to find the ball. A lot of people saying he's a pure wing, spent a lot of time at high half back, and if you were giving points in the draft class for consistency, this is the kid here, because his ability to go ahead of the ball and do damage is something that's impressive. His goal kicking is really impressive. Eight goals, 17 this year. He's got a little bit of work to sharpen that up, but a lot of them were kicking on the run from deep. And this guy's work rate is phenomenal. And I got the pleasure of interviewing this kid. Now, I think Carlton have taken him right about his money. I had him 30th in this draft. Bang on where he needs to be. And this kid can play. Works really hard in transition. The six marks this year. Gets it inside 50 and gets it going quickly with 6.5 inside 50s. And... A lot of score involvements this year. This guy is there. Just under 26 touches this year. And his speed as well as his endurance is something that is really exciting to watch. Now, this guy won't go on the inside. This guy is literally that guy on the outside. And I think, you know, this guy will be putting pressure on them players like your Jack Martins and stuff. Because I can see him becoming a high half back, a high half forward that is looking to roam there in one of them rotations. And when this guy gets the ball in open traffic, look out. He's a very smart cookie with his football, and he uses it incredibly high. And you can see that with the players there around him, he can model his game and take a little bit off here and there. This kid will be good. This guy is already someone who excites me and very consistent, very consistent. That's something to look out for. Jackson Bins is going to be a very, very accomplished player. This guy has got 200 gamer written all over him even at the pick he is, because of how his output is at junior level. It has always been consistent. One of the least talked about, but highest output players in the last four rounds, particularly the last couple of games that were televised, he stood out. And he models his game on Ed Langdon, and you see it. I see him more of a Cal Amon. We discussed that, and he had a little bit of a wry smile, because I think that he does impact a lot more damaging in the forward half of the ground. Check him out, Jackson. He's very good, and I'm really excited about seeing a guy with high footy IQ and big endurance playing for the football club. We finish with 47, and we talked about we wanted a key defender, and we talked about we wanted forward depth, and we got Harry Lemmy, the 202 juggernaut 95 keg, key forward converted to a key defender, and this guy here has got something about him. Now, West Adelaide have more key forwards than a locksmith. Do you know what I mean? They have that many keys. And he literally had a bit of a hard time because when they all got fit and the change of coaching set up, he, he did slip down to the back. And there was a position change. He had a few injuries and illness, and he was really highly rated last year. The same with Scully. Both him and them were top 10 players. And it took 12 months, and unfortunately, he slipped down. And his slipping down is Carlton's gain. He's got some real strong forward craft. He really enjoys the game. He's got sticky mitts. He's very quick. He's very athletic as well. And he reads the play incredibly well. 
There's some question marks there were when he played in Sandfall about his body and just learning it. But these are all learnings, all learnings and things that you can really teach. And I've got a feeling that Cowan may have got a gem here. I'm not going to make no secret. Scully was my boy. But I understand why Carlton have gone for Lemmy because of that versatility. He did show a lot down back. And his ability that he's positioning one-on-one -on -one down back was quite impressive, where it sometimes needs work in the forward half. But he is coming into a club with probably two of the best defenders in Young and also Wietering, but also two of the best forwards to learn off in Kerno and Mackay. And that really excites me because this guy doesn't have to play. Do you know what I mean? He's got to learn. And one thing is really good with all them forwards, and me and Scully discussed this in our interview, is all of them have an incredible learning in where to be in three forwards and three def tall defensive backs in the tactically. They stay out of each other's way. And this kid here really does bring it to ground to the advantage when he can't mark it. He's got a very good understanding of when to mark and when to kick. I really like this pickup, and this is one here where you've got someone that you can lean on. And I could see him being like, you know, that later pick that in two or three years' time can really flourish for this football club. I like Harry. I like him. There's something about him. And really, honestly, get around him, especially at the VFL. I think he's going to be something special. I think he's going to be what we hoped Josh Cripps with. And I do see it as maybe a chance now that Brody Kemp gets some continuity in where he plays because I think this guy could he be a really valuable swingman, which is what is niche in the AFL now. Really, really get around him because when you're looking at key forwards, you're looking at leading patterns and an understanding of where to be and how to do it. And this is what Harry's got. He's exceptional at that. And again, very good kicking technique like all West Adelaide kids do have. They spend a lot of time on that. So check him out. Get down the VFL and support him. I like this kid. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Stay safe. And until next time, come out. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll be back soon.